What do you get when you put together someone that needs money for a project, and a few people, and a few more people, and even more people? You have crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is when lots of people collectively pool their money together to support something. Well, not this kind of pool. For instance, let's say that you're making an independent movie and you need financing of $150,000. Maybe you're an engineer and have always dreamt of building a robot that can walk your dog. Or you're a nanotech company needing funding to resolve the inherent conflict between Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. Crowdfunding is nothing new. The concept has been around for a long time. For instance, in the 1800s when the French gave us the Statue of Liberty, they only built the statue. The Americans were responsible for building the pedestal that the statue stands on. Well, fundraising proved to be very difficult and the pedestal was in terrible jeopardy of not getting built. So a New York newspaper urged the American public to donate money. 125,000 people donated an average of one dollar or less and they were able to raise enough money to build the pedestal. So, how does crowdfunding work in the 21st century? In the last few years, crowdfunding has become a major trend both in the United States and worldwide. In 2012, crowdfunding raised an estimated $2.7 billion in fundraising. Of this, over 50% was attributable to North America. This is an 81% increase since 2011, and in 2013, it is expected to reach $5.1 billion worldwide. There are currently four types of crowdfunding. The first type is called reward-based. Reward-based crowdfunding is when you invest in a project and in return you receive stuff. For instance, if you contribute $50 to Anna Monaguchi's music project, they could offer you in return an advanced copy of their CD, two concert tickets, and a mention in the liner notes of their album. You get the idea. There are many different platforms for reward-based crowdfunding, but some popular ones are Kickstarter and Indiegogo. There are also specialty sites for musical artists, such as Artistshare, Celeband, and Pledge Music. The one thing that you do not get in return for rewards-based crowdfunding is money. This is why Zach Braff doesn't offer you a percentage of the box office profits if his movie is successful, or any equity in his production company. This is because until recently, in the United States, it has been illegal to have any crowdsourcing arrangement in which people are asked to contribute funding in exchange for potential profits. This type of transaction is deemed to be a security, and all securities transactions are governed by and have to be registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Which brings us to the second type of crowdfunding, which is called equity-based. Equity-based crowdfunding is when you become a shareholder of the company that you're investing in and you can receive a share of the potential profits. Now, how can this be? I just said that it was illegal. Well, I actually said that until recently it's been illegal. A few years ago, some very ambitious investors banded together and lobbied Washington, D.C. to ease the securities laws. The intent of their bill was to make it legal to use crowdfunding to fund startup companies and small businesses in return for equity. The legislation passed with bipartisan support and Barack Obama signed the Jobs Act into law in April of 2012. Now don't let the name fool you, it doesn't really stand for jobs, it actually stands for Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act. There is just one problem. In order to protect unsophisticated investors from fraud and speculative investments, Congress required that the Jobs Act be subject to certain SEC regulations. The SEC was supposed to have established these regulations by January of 2013, but as of June 2013, it still has not done so. So until these regulations are established, you still cannot legally engage in equity-based crowdfunding. If you see companies doing this, they are most likely affiliated with a broker-dealer and are operating under pre-existing and very stringent securities regulations. The third type of crowdfunding is called debt-based. This is also considered a securities transaction and falls under the JOBS Act. This is where you lend funds in return for interest payments along with repayment of the capital loans. To protect the lender, the borrower must demonstrate creditworthiness and the capability to repay the debt. 
The fourth type of crowdfunding is called donation-based. This is when contributions go towards a charitable cause, such as funding wells for fresh water. It is similar to reward-based crowdfunding, although you may not actually be promised a reward other than the knowledge of having contributed to a worthy cause. In 2012, an estimated 49% of the funds raised in crowdfunding were donation-based. Well, that pretty much sums up the four types of crowdfunding. Reward-based, equity-based, debt-based, and donation-based. So, is the recent explosion of crowdfunding just a fad, or is it here to stay? We'll see, but in the meantime, understand that there are risks as well as benefits for all types of crowdfunding. So, before you start your own crowdfunding platform or join someone else's, educate yourself because the last thing you want to do is get lost in the crowd. Get it?